Hello everyone, welcome to my tent. So I'm uh, snow camping here, or rather I'm practicing snow camping. So uh, I'm testing out a bunch of stuff. Uh, if you guys never been snow camping, you, it's something you guys have to try. Can you actually hear the snow actually? Snow camping is one of those things I think uh, everyone should do at some point in their life uh, just to see what it's like and it's actually nothing quite like it. There's a reason why a lot of people uh, do it. And for me, I am actually at a public access road that's actually nearby my house uh, because I, uh, before you go to places like Alaska or something, you definitely have to... Uh, uh, it's a good idea for you to practice. Check out all the boxes that, of the stuff that you need to work on or the stuff you need to get. For example, to, for a climate control to, and to help with the heat, uh, as you can see, I put some insulation uh, around the tent and I found out that uh, rooftop tents, the Velcros or tape or duct tapes, uh, gaff tapes, all kinds of adhesive, they just don't adhere to the fabric of the tent. So. Uh, Luckily, I may do. <laughs> if, if you can see here, I actually uh, poked a hole and that's actually the window lock and I put the stick across it so it'll uh, stand. I actually took some leftover and I actually uh, made like a little cylindrical uh, little stud here or something so that it can rest on it. Uh, and then from there, I taped to each other and then it'll... It barely, it's, this is barely holding. It's possible while I'm sleeping that it'll collapse on me. I have a little buddy heater here just in case like it gets way too cold. Uh, I'll go ahead and uh, heat this up. The good thing about these insulation is that once it's heat up, it will take a little bit of time for it to uh, get cold again. I have other uh, ways to heat myself. These are all zero degree, you know, uh, rated sleeping bags. I have a second one here just in case I want a second one. I have some clothes. Uh, I'm, these are my thermals and I have these little hand warmer type things. I have several and I also have the body one where you can just wear it. If I'm inside the sleeping bag and causing some heat inside, uh, it's all about insulation. So it's, that should help fight whatever uh, fight the freezing temperature that's right outside. This is not my first time camping in a sub-zero temperature, but it definitely is the first time I'm doing it like in a snowstorm. This is supposed to be close to a blizzard condition soon. Yesterday there was hail, rain, and snow, so it was a little bit icy. But today it snowed all day, <laughs> and um, it's supposed, it, this right now this is a pause. It was super windy earlier, there was howling everywhere. This thing was like shaking like it was an earthquake. Which is why I also have these, which are ear plugs to help me sleep. I'm beginning to realize I need to organize the storage a little better here in this tent. But yeah, um, setting all this up took way longer than I thought. It's already 1 a.m. And according to AccuWeather, it's 20 degrees outside right now, outside the tent. And it's supposed to get colder, especially like around maybe 2 or 3 a.m. So uh, in a couple hours actually. Ah, so let's see how this uh, works out. If something happens, like at least I'm close enough to the house and I have some signal, so. All right guys, you guys have a good night. I'll see you in the morning. Good morning, that actually, so really that wasn't that bad. So the air gets cold, but I was nice and toasty and warm. Yeah, but the air does get really cold, uh, like as in like everything was fine except breathing in the cold air. <laughs> Other than that, it's pretty good. I got the uh, butter heat, uh, buddy heater going, going now. I cut out a little window. Let me show you guys here. There's the buddy heater, there's a little window that I cut out. And you might be thinking, well, are you crazy? But actually, because the buddy heater is uh, uh, right next to the window, uh, it gets fresh air for the buddy heater, oxygen continues to go around the tent, and the cold weather gets uh, pretty much heated immediately as it comes in. So it's actually really hot in here right now. So, um, ooh, I kind of felt like a cold breeze, so I guess the wind still kind of comes through. I think it's time for me to change and uh, 
make some breakfast. Guess I could eat ramen. This is a very nice ramen weather. But ramen for breakfast? That's a little weird. I'm gonna do it. Everything is like frozen, even these like fabric. They're like crispy. I'm gonna have to open this again later when there's less snow. When I get down to a place where there's less snow and uh, use a brush or something to clear it out. My car does not allow me to do this while it's resting. So I actually had to turn the engine on, keep it on. And when it's on the top position, I turn off the engine real quick, then I can do this. That means if I stop the car now, it's gonna try and uh, wipe. That means I have to free the wipers so the motor is can the motor on it can freely uh, spin or rather actuate, or else it's gonna get stuck. It might do some damage. All that good stuff, you know that. And the wipers are not cheap to repair from the motor side down. Yeah, depending on what kind of damage it's doing. Right now my engine temp is at 127 and pushing through all this snow is probably going to put some strain on this so I'm going to wait until about 174. In case you're wondering why 174, I happen to know that 174 and 194 is where my engine temp uh, likes to stay at. Uh, I think 194 is when the thermostat is completely open, like maybe even stretching it a bit, you know. All right, it's time. The engine temp is a 165. So, let's go for it. I'm gonna have to go forward a little bit. It's already slipping, it's already slipping, it's already slipping. All right, I'm gonna have to go a little to the right. I'm, because I'm going in reverse, I have to kill the momentum, unfortunately. Okay. All right. Shall we go to second gear? I don't know whether to lock the wheels or not. It's 
says it's slipping. Okay, let's try locking the wheel, shall we? Nope, it did not work. Okay. Let's try just flooring it. Just flooring it. Just flooring it, slipping, slipping. It says I'm slipping. Oh, 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 I am getting stuck here. See if I can uh, reverse and then make it up. Oh, I'm oversteering. Okay, let's see if I can. I think my car is stuck. Just a foot, come on, just a foot. Cause I need, I think I hit something in the back. Okay, let's see if I can just reverse out of here. Got four wheels, let's see. And remember, this is a clutch based four wheels, so it's not a real lock. Hopefully the gravity will help. Alright, I'm gonna go back to a spot where I can uh, safely uh, leave a park, which is basically back there. Basically back where I was camping. That's a good spot. There we go. I think what I'm gonna do. and go back to the, to the place I parked right here and I don't know if it'll go up let's see oh it does here we go <laughs> oh, that was so much fun! My goodness, look how deep this is. I don't know if you can tell from the camera, but... Woo -hoo -hoo. Wow! <laughs> I built a road! Alright, so the Honda is really, really impressive. I can't believe it actually gone through all this, but that part... I'm here to tell you, some of the people in Bobcat uh, refused to come down there. Um, we had many a professionals. Uh, get stuck even with chains. Oh look, this is where it got stuck. It couldn't push <sighs> Ooh. It basically couldn't push through uh, that oh. And you could see why It couldn't push that. This is uphill by the way like this <laughs> so I'm all, I came all the way to get this GoPro <sighs> YouTube life. I'm here to tell you if I walked and I put my foot in that, like if I didn't know, I would probably break my uh, ankle. That's how deep that is. If I go up there, it's a flat land, so it'll be so ex much fun and exciting to spin the wheels, do some donuts, because it's a private property, you know. Ah, too bad, I was looking forward to it, but there it goes. Whew. Okay guys, I'm home now, and I wanted to make a quick little ending video. Uh, to share what I've learned through the experience that you just watched. So first of all, if you haven't been camping, maybe snow camping is not a good first one. 
uh, the, to try it and do. But I do recommend you know you practice snow camping. In fact, after this time, I'm probably gonna go one more time somewhere local, somewhere. Uh, if you're gonna go snow camping and practice, I recommend going to a place that's already established, uh, that is already an established campground, so that you know they have all the facilities, and if something goes wrong, you can get help, and their neighbors, and things like that. Instead of rather than going remote camping, you know, my thing was uh, uh, remote camping simulation. So unless there was an emergency, I wasn't gonna go home, and I was close enough. So that was a great practice. And a couple of things that I learned is number one, let's get the obvious out of the way, are the car prep. Now that alone is a whole different. Uh, episode I think your car has to be able to handle the freezing temperature so there are a couple of things you should do and make sure it's in a tip-top shape so to speak and also know what your car is capable of as you can see even with my car uh, because of the, the thick 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 four feet actually in some of that road condition uh, so it was I thought maybe I could make it up there that part of the road gets stuck uh, gets stuck vehicle all the time but I thought maybe if I just pushed it a little because it was powdery snow that I could make it up to the upper level, but I couldn't. Um, it was like, ah, dang it. All right, well, that worked out. But I'm, I, I'm, I'm glad that I was able to uh, make it down to the lower tier, though. Uh, it all goes to show uh, you need to know uh, your vehicle. Like if you have a four wheel drive, make sure you know how to get into four wheel drive and what the high low, uh, four high and the four low, uh, all that stuff uh, does. Uh, if you have a Subaru, please play around with the traction control a little bit, learn it a little bit. And of course, that means you should also research the location you're going to because the snow level and the way it works is actually kind of different uh, everywhere you go. Certain campsites are located in a lower elevation so, or a different kind of climate. So it's a uh, different kind of snow, different kind of uh, rules, different kind of chain requirements. Um, and where I was today, uh, where the video that you watched we, was R3 condition turning into closure actually because of the blizzard condition that was coming through. There was a little pause that was pretty awesome. It had a pretty clear sky with no snow while I was going to get the GrowPro so I'm kind of thankful for that mercy uh, from the weather. But you might not get that lucky. Things might get worse as you go. So make sure you uh, research the location you're gonna go for the most part for the most part if it's a campsite you should be fine but if you're gonna get, start dispersed camping wild camping boondocking that kind of stuff you definitely need to uh, know what you're up against because you don't want to get stuck for days in a location where you don't have any signal and you don't have any emergency satellite devices that is a recipe for disaster really just fatal mistake next thing is obviously if you're gonna go snow camping have some kind of a uh, heat plan not just clothing and you know uh, things but heat plan you need to be able to uh, fight off the cold inside the tent remember these freezing temperatures are going to fight its way in it's all actively think about it that way it's actively fighting to go inside your tent so you need something that'll fight off the freezing temperature inside your tent in my case I had a buddy heater I know some people uh, that go with uh, winter camping use diesel heaters. I have been researching that. Maybe I'll go ahead and incorporate that. But right now, I am in the research phase of that. Research is very important. Asking people that have used certain products is very important. So um, it's beginning to look like I'm gonna buy like a Chinese, uh, cheap Chinese diesel heaters and dismantle the whole thing and rebuild it using a uh, better case and better products or something uh, but again something like that requires research and might I might not do it because uh, judging by the last time it worked out pretty well buddy heater uh, that small one is designed for uh, indoor but remember it buddy heater warning says you want some ventilation we, and tent is not the best ventilated thing you know um, but it is the choice of almost every winter camper there is so and I don't know too many people that have been you know I don't know too many people that died from buddy heaters. You, I use it, you know, on and off. I use it when it gets too cold, warm up the tent, get it nice and toasty, and then turn it off. Uh, I also, as you know, took those hand warmer things. And if you ever seen those hand warmers, they have a larger one called a body warmer, and it like sticks not to your body but to the clothes, like you know, the, your undergarment, so to speak. And that thing is amazing. It's like an electric blanket. That's right here and right back here. That's where I put them. 
and it just keeps you warm all night, you know. And um, if you have a couple more, like the hand warmer stuff, then you just put some of those things inside your uh, sleeping bag and it produces heat inside a sleeping bag. And if you have a pretty good sleeping bag, you are going to be well insulated and the heat is gonna be there. Uh, it, it's really nice. Speaking of sleeping bag, uh, part of your heat plan, remember to research your sleeping bag. Don't cheap out on the sleeping bag when it comes to winter camping. You can do that for summer, you can do that for retreats, you can do that for all kinds of different things. But when it comes to outside, in the tent, in the wilderness, in uh, freezing temperatures, that's not gonna work. Don't cheap out on that. Be and make sure you do your research with those sleeping bags. Zero degree sleeping bag does is not what most people think it is. First of all, there's different kind of temperature ratings on the same sleeping bag. Uh, what you're looking for is a comfort degrees so most you know uh, most sleeping bags are about 40 degrees 50 degrees comfort level that means you know around 40 degrees and some of these companies exaggerate the numbers so if it's 40 degrees that means at 40 degrees that's uh, as low as you can go for comfort when you're talking about the minimal that they label like zero degree sleeping bags what that means is zero degrees is a point in which you die it's not, it doesn't mean you're comfortable to zero degrees. No, zero degree is the point of failure of that sleeping bag. That means hyperthermia kicks in. Literally, that is a point in which you start to hyper, uh, go into hyperthermia and you die slowly, you know? So uh, if the comfort level of that sleeping bag is say 25 degrees and the zero degrees is the minimum, that means between zero and 25, you are not gonna be comfortable at all. It's not designed for comfort. And just because it's a comfort degree doesn't mean uh, it you, you can wear PJs or sleep nude in the sleeping bag and you will be comfortable. No, you still have to wear the thermals and all the winter gear. So just do your, uh, make sure you do your research on that. And yes, thermals are a must on these things. So another tip that I have is make sure you separate have a plan to separate your snow gear and your uh, inside tent gear, I would say. It's like inside your tent, if you have, you know, uh, like PJs or comfort uh, shirts and wearables, things like that, it should be fine inside the tent. But then once you start putting some of the snow gear, outside gear in there, that's when it becomes a problem because snow gets everywhere, they get stuck everywhere. Uh, boots, for example, if you have snow boots and then you don't have a plan for it, so you put it inside the tent and your tent is kind of small, then you're kind of screwed. You, everything is gonna get wet. Everything's gonna go everywhere. Then that's another thing. Uh, to, I learned snow goes everywhere. Again, I tend to, uh, I've camped, again, I've camped in uh, sub-zero temperatures that did not have snow, you know, necessarily. Had a lot of frost and fro freezing uh, parts, like frozen parts but not necessarily snow, but snow goes everywhere. So next time, if you have a truck bed like mine, I'm probably gonna have a tarp over it or something. If you have a tanu cover, I guess it's fine. Um, SUVs or, or a camper shell, that type of things, uh, it, you guys have a lot of advantage here because you're able to keep things in there. I'm sure you already saw from my video, man, that snow was all over uh, my bags. It's just, it's, and it's not like, whoosh, and it cleans, you know? <laughs> That's not how that works, apparently. Speaking of snow everywhere, here's what you might not realize. It's such an obvious thing, but you might not realize until you actually do it. It never hits you. That's, at least I didn't realize it. Everything freezes, duh, it's a freezing temperature. No, I mean like literally your water supply outside will freeze overnight and you won't be able to use them. Your uh, water tank, uh, your five gallon you know, water jugs, these things will all freeze overnight. Uh, the only way I found to kind of mitigate that is ironically, put these gallons of water inside an ice box. I know, right? Ice box usually you know, is meant to keep things cold inside, but in this case, we're keeping it kind of warm. And another parallel to that is the food your food will freeze. That means, uh, you might be like, well, what's wrong with that? Well, you, there's no, well, you'd have to thaw your food. So you have to keep it in a place where it won't be uh, frozen or you have to have a plan to uh, somehow de-thaw it. I suppose if you have one of those stone things that you put it on and it de-thaws, that might be okay. But if you don't have like a way to defrost things, then it 
becomes really, really inconvenient. Um, I suppose you could still cook it and then melt as it goes I, uh, and hope that it melts as it goes. As long as you have a plan for it, you're good. And let's not forget the obvious, the restroom. Make sure you figure out the restroom situation uh, thoroughly. Uh, in fact, go to a campsite that has one. But even then, you will realize this. Literally, anytime during the day, you're like, oh man, you're getting comfortable and it's like, I gotta go. <sighs> you don't wanna face the outside world, especially if you have all of the snow gear off. That means you have to take all the snow gear on and if you have a roof tent, uh, rooftop tent like mine, you have to go down the ladder, you have to go to the restroom and it's freezing, okay? So make sure you have some kind of plan and uh, especially number two, you know? <laughs> As long as you have a plan, as long as you have something that you can live with, that's fine. In terms of clothing, uh, I think there's a lot of great snow gear out there that you can easily research, but don't take your normal jackets and sweaters and expect them to live. You do need a waterproof type stuff, not just like uh, warm, you, because snow is different. Okay, freezing temperature and snow, they're two different things. Uh, they go hand in hand, but preparation might be different because snow, you literally have to get fully waterproof things. Um, I personally recommend definitely a right type of glove and scarf and maybe even a beanie. Uh, anything you can do to keep yourself warm from the freezing temperatures. You can easily Google this stuff in terms of uh, you know, freezing temp uh, or how to prepare for the freezing temperature. Uh, uh, what kind of jacket. Um, I use a Carhartt products. They have worked wonders for me when it comes to uh, winter jackets. They don't necessarily have the best pants for winter for some reason. I don't know why. Snowboarding or skiing gear sometimes works really well, but just know that they are also designed to sweat in. So they're not necessarily the best when you're sitting still. They're also not the most comfortable when you're sitting still. So you do your research. Uh, so make sure you uh, purchase things that you're comfortable with. Uh, try them on and make sure they're rated for freezing temperature and snow. Uh, make sure you take care of laundry. Put Make sure you have a laundry bag. I luckily had a little bag. Uh, trash management can get tricky because you don't always want to go outside to throw away the trash. But definitely my, uh, my biggest thing is I have to figure out how to do insulation in my tent because I like to have that thing insulated. I suppose I could live without it, but it makes such a big difference. So try and figure out, remember tents, even a four season tent is not designed very well to keep you warm inside with a, uh, you without any warm source inside and not just you. You do have to kind of keep your, the inside warm a little bit so then it'll keep the warmth inside, right? So insulation for me is very, very important. I just got to figure out how to do that one. Uh, no tape or Velcro, no it just worked. So that's another thing I learned. So I'm glad I did this practice. So practice, 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 okay? All right, guys. Well, thank you so much for watching up to this extent. Uh, see you next time. Who knows what I'll make?